What's up, everyone? So in this video, we're going to be doing an interview with my coaching program student, Tony, on how he forexed his Amazon business in 2022 to over 950K in revenue. So if you're new here, my name is Miles. I'm a 24-year-old full-time online arbitrage seller, so I'm flipping name brand products on Amazon's platform, Nikes, Legos, etc. like that. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. There's a lot of gems on scaling an online arbitrage business the right way. Let's get right into it. And if you guys are interested in working with me directly within my coaching program, the link is going to be in the description to apply. Serious sellers only, so if you're interested, you can take a look at that. Either way, let's get after it. Tony, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you have a pretty cool story with just how long you've been doing Amazon and then ultimately like really figuring it out or so over the last year. So you want to provide the audience with some context and background around your history with Amazon and everything like that? Yeah, for sure. So I started in 2014, so I'm kind of one of the older guys. Uh, before Keepa, we had Camel, 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 and that was the big dog in town. Yeah. And, and the landscape was totally different for like coming up to speed with social media and stuff and people like teaching and talking about Amazon. Because I started out with um, following a guy's blog called Ryan Grant, and he just documented his journey. And that's kind of how I got into it. And I had read a, a $3 ebook called Barcode Booty. That's probably totally outdated by now. But it basically said like, go into stores, scan things, and keep going until you hit profit, and you'll be good. And so like the big thing for me was I didn't believe that it was possible. And that's kind of one of the hard things with Amazon is that you're not going to believe that something sells until you get a sale yourself. And when I was starting out, I was making like you know, $20 an hour. And I had this big introspection where I was just like, you know what? There's people out there that make way more money than I do. Because like me personally, I would never buy some of the stuff that I sell because I think it's overpriced. But like, that's not the point. Your point is you want people that are, like, are bad with their money. Well, not necessarily bad with money, but have spared discretionary money. Like that's your ideal customer. And back then, $25 was the threshold for free shipping. And so they would always push like, hey, like get your products to be 25 or higher because you're trying to capture the non-prime members on free shipping. And so as far as background goes, like I started with toys and I went really big, really hard with Toys R Us. And that was like my main squeeze. And so I was full time from 2014 to 2018 until they bankrupted. And like after that, I went part time because I didn't really pivot and that was on me. And I got like a regular day job again. And then it was just only recently that I joined Miles' program in 2022, no? Yeah, like, May, right? May or June, yeah. May or June last year, I think 2021, I did 280,000 and last year was 927,000. So like, you know, it, it goes to show you when you have your information like guided and concentrated, it's just a matter of magnifying it. Cause you know, you figure it out, you do your proof of concept and you just crank the dial to, to 10 or whatever you're able to do. Yeah. I like, uh, what, what was it like the philosophy of, uh, look through items until you find a profit. That's been basically the, the framework for a good part of my life in terms of the goal every day basically and for me um i would use what's it called i ended up getting a bluetooth scanner early on because i realized like using the phone was really slow doing the camera and stuff and so the bluetooth scanner is just a handheld device that you scan it kind of like the checkout guns at the grocery stores and you just rip through items because more often than not maybe like 90 percent of the stuff you're gonna scan isn't gonna be profitable and so like i kind of think of it like um i think there's a show on discovery called uh oh gold pan like doing one at a time and with the barcode, it's like you have an industrial shaker machine. And you're like shaking the mountain because you just need speed at that point. And that's your like your ally just going really, really fast. Yeah. And getting getting through a lot of data, too. Like I like the the frameworks you were talking about, how you're just not going to believe stuff sells until you see it sells. And like people yeah. watch. There's some people watching who like aren't fully sure this works. Give it a go, ladies and gents. Go take the seller amp app. Scan some barcodes, some used books. You probably got them in the house already. See what the market's looking like. Start to learn about sales rank, yeah. et cetera. And the mental uh, reframing of like, okay, now I wouldn't pay 4X the price I could get this for in Walmart on Amazon. Some people will though, right? They value that speed and convenience, right? Then I just think that's like a good thesis around being an entrepreneur in general. It's realizing what the market wants isn't necessarily what you want, but you can still totally give it to them. Yeah. I kind of always think of it too. Like whenever I'm looking at a new product, I kind of think of it like as a, like a flow of water of like demand. And I'm just trying to like walk in front of it and like get some of the demand off of it. I don't need all of it. Just like, you know, a little bit of it will, will make your day, you know? Yeah. And that's, what's nice about like online arbitrage specifically. While I definitely think uh, like wholesale and like private label specifically is the long-term play for a lot of us, that yeah. kind of thing, or just in general, like higher leverage models in general, right? With online arbitrage, like those brands already spent millions and millions of dollars and yeah. decades in many cases building that demand. And we're just, you know, going into Target, going on Nike.com, some of these different websites, Vitacost, IRB, et cetera, and finding little arbitrage opportunities within that. 
that's what I really love about the platform too, as well as doing retail arbitrage is you don't have to create the demand. It's already there. You kind of just walk in the way of it. And Nike lends itself really well on that because Amazon doesn't sell it. And so every, the entire market, pretty much like 99% of the market is all third party. And the customer base is more or less preconditioned to pay an elevated price. And that's really good because then they're not going to come at you and say like, why are you price gouging? Because, you know, if you're selling like a pencil for like $10, they're, like, they're going to have an issue. Yeah. But people are going to expect to pay like a hundred bucks for a sneaker and they're not going to think twice about it. Yeah. And it's all, it's all like just supply and demand basically with that. So what does your current operation look like? I know you're doing at this point, you know, six figures profit, which is awesome right there, but you have a nicely leveraged operation in that like you uh, work from home. And so you kind of want to talk through what the situation looks like that prep source. Yeah. So I do fully 100% FBA and hundred percent OA. So I work from home entirely. And I got a prep center actually through networking in your group. One of the members, Matt B, gave me the recommendation. Oh, and I, cool. that was my first prep center in um, the eight or nine years that I've been doing this. And it's so funny that um, that was a result of networking. And so in October, that's where like, I started really cranking it. I think during Q4, I had like $150,000 in play. And you know that's kind of the big uh, secret in this, in this game is that like, it takes a lot of money. It doesn't tend to take a lot of money, but having a lot of money helps just magnify your success. <laughs> And that was kind of one of my, my pivot points for last year, because um, at the start of the year, I ended up getting an SBA loan for 270000 for 30 years at like 3.75%. And so like, you know, as a seller, you have like three pain points. You have, you have the financing issue, you have the lead flow, and then you have the labor. And I was able to solve all three last year. And that was a big turning point with me, because like when I was doing all the prep, it basically turned off sourcing. And that's bad. You don't <laughs> want to do that. And so with getting the prep center it let me turn off labor and turn on sourcing all the time and so last year you had turned me on to Kohl's and I figured out like really intimately how the program works and more or less how to I call it weaponize it and like maximize the discount and so with OA like normally you're buying sale items but with like Kohl's cash you can use the Kohl's cash to manufacture a sale on a non-sale item and make it a replenishable item yeah. And there's tons of websites like that too, that we're looking at this uh, week and everything. And that's why you guys are watching, you really want to be on the email list of a lot of these big websites. You want to have capital one shopping, Recton, top cashback, et cetera, because that's the competitive advantage and that dude, anyone can read to keep a yeah. chart, right? But not everyone can find X, Y, Z specific deal, which comes into, you know, you and I being friends, you being friends with other people, because yeah. that's where you get some of that specific alpha that you're just not going to get from a one to many like video like this, but like the relationships you can build within the community. Like I know I was on you to start the Instagram page. Yes. You guys make sure you follow um, Tony as well right there. So what are some of the, um, cause you've been at it for a while, like longer than I have, uh, like big beginner mistakes you see often and then so we can help the audience avoid them. I would almost recommend you just like, it doesn't make good business sense to do this, but just sell anything you can sell, even if it breaks even, because you just need the experience and the belief that it's going to sell. And then you work on your, what's it called? Then you work on manufacturing your margins and search for profitable items. Um, I did, did this to a degree when I started in that I manufactured revenue on like high velocity, low ROI items. And what that did early on was help me build my credit because it seems like when you're applying for credit cards, all they care about is your cash flow. And if your cash flow looks really high, you might lose on the per sale, but one is lose on the per sale basis, but the impact that you're aiming to reach is that you want to get a higher credit limit because your cash flow is higher. So it's kind of like you're doing a trade off up front, you're like you're not making anything, but on the backside with your credit lines, you're going to go high. And so the other thing for newer sellers is like really learn your Keepa because Garrett makes a really good point of saying you're buying the data, not the item. For me, the item, I don't care about the item. It's just a medium to get the money. And so <laughs> I'm always looking at the keep it data to kind of see like, what did it do in the past? And is it likely to repeat that performance in the future? Because the last thing you want to do is enter these markets that go like up and down because the price oscillation will hurt you. And a lot of people, I think, think of us as entrepreneurs that were really take on like risky situations. And I would argue the opposite. I'm very risk averse. What we do is we, we go into like positions on items that we're purchasing, knowing that we're going to win. And we're trying to mitigate the risk as much as we can because it's basically a calculated risk. You're trying to get maximum upside with the minimum uh, downside. And so that's going to come in time because you're going to need to, you know, you do your analysis with your keeper. 
Sure. Yeah. And like compared to what you and I had, like even just back in 2019, like I definitely didn't know how to use Keepa correctly. There was nowhere near the amount of free content that everyone is yeah. taking advantage of at the C in this right now, having seller amp as well is awesome. So I'd say if you're new, you definitely keep it nice and simple, keep a seller amp. Like we're obviously happy to have you as a yes. seller amp user and everything and just keep it simple and just watch a bunch of stuff basically like that. Now on the flip side though, and that the way you and I operate now is very differently than when we started. Yeah and everything. So you want to talk a little bit about like, without getting into too much detail, just kind of the, the sourcing methods that you do that are non-traditional. Cause I think like Garrett has a good video on Keepa product finder as well. That I think will provide a lot of value to people. They just probably don't know about it yet. Yeah. Uh, to, 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 uh, to piggyback off the earlier point. Um, the other thing too, is like when you're starting out, like, um, it's easy to get discouraged that you're not hitting pay dirt, so to speak. And it's just a numbers game. Like you got to do like a hundred items to get like, I don't know, whatever the number is like five good items, you know? But yeah. for me, like when you're starting out, one of the things I recommend is like, if you have the option on the website to sort it by top or best seller, do that first, because the idea and the hope is that if it's selling really intensely on this website, it's more than likely selling intensely on another website, i.e. Amazon. And you're hoping that there's an ASIN on the other side waiting for you to pair against item to, to ASIN. Um, well, what was the question? I got lost my oh, hands. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of just non-traditional sources, non-traditional sources, you get excited talking yeah. about this stuff. We yeah, yeah. Do. Okay. Yeah. For me, my personal setup, like, um, I love doing like UPC to UPC match. So like, I'm just trying to rip data. So think of like how tactical arbitrage goes through the websites and pulls all the UPCs. Like, that's more or less what I learned how to do with automation, working with a developer, and that's kind of like my secret sauce without getting into it. And it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, where it's like I want to shake the mountain. And like, it's just a numbers game. And so you just need to go through lots and lots of UPCs. And with shoes, the good thing about shoes is like, you know, you just need to get onto the variation. Because if you can get onto the variation, you unlock all the sizes. And more often than not, this, one of the sizes on there is going to work for you. You just don't know which one. But the first thing is just get onto the variation. And then you go into Kia, but you sort it by highest price. And then, you know, you can just do your calculations based off that using Celeram. Because you know, like of the, say it's like $60 break even point, you know anything um, price below 60 is not going to work. So you just focus your time above 60 and see if you can make any of those works and keep it make sense. And you just go from there and manufacturing and margins, like the really big thing. I did a call last night and I was talking about manufacturing margin and the impact it can have. And the, the takeaway was like, you know, someone that's normally doing it, that doesn't know any of the tips and tricks, they would pay $110. We'll say a hundred dollar item is going to be 10% sales tax. They'll pay full price, no sale. Whereas someone that knows how to manufacture the margin, they're going to push that price with tax exempt gift cards, cash bag, uh, they're waiting for a sale. They have a coupon, site-wide coupon, or like a new membership sign-up bonus. And you can effectively get something for $100 for like $56. And just from a standpoint, like competition standpoint alone, you need to realize that you're competing against people that you're using some or all of these these devices. And and if you're not doing that, you're limiting the pool of items that you can buy. Because imagine you have 100 items, and at face value, only like 10 of them might work. But if you know how to manufacture the margin, well, now suddenly 40 of the 100 might work now. And so that's the thing that I would really want to drill down on you guys. Like, it's a lot of little things that you're doing that add up to a big thing. What's it saying? Like, the sum of the parts is greater than the total or something like that? Yeah, something like that. And so everyone out, take notes. Okay, so we got, there's all types of ways you can get your buy costs lower. And each one of these you do, you're knocking off competition, which is where you want to be, right? So discounted gift cards, you can use a site like called Card Cash, right? Um, just for data, keep on seller and those ones are paid. Um, free Chrome extensions for cash back and coupons. Rakuten, Top Cash Back, Capital One Shopping, the main ones. Honey, Cooper, you can use as well um, right there. And then the um, site-wide sales sign-up codes like that as well are, are super, super well. And that's like, I, I would like just telling you guys, it's exactly how you do all the right way. <laughs> you you yeah. do that right there. Like that is exactly what we do basically on there. Um, just to kind of finish up in terms of like, Specifically, uh, like what you would do differently to get to where you are um, faster, just the next like six months or year, like where are your bottlenecks right now? Uh, right now, uh, I'm doing everything by myself still. And yeah, so I need to get like a VA team behind me because there's a lot of waste in what I do and I waste time. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the Im what I'm trying to do right now is because I've become complacent. And I'm mainly only sourcing from Kohl's. And so what I want to do is add more websites to my my catalog, essentially, because my, my thesis is kind of like, I did this with like one or two websites. Like imagine what I'm going to do with like 10 websites, you know? Yeah. And sure. so you just have to do that initial groundwork of like coming up to speed and how you can maximize like either the cash back programs or manufacturing the margin in general, you know? Yeah. And you know, there's the stress testing too, to make sure you don't get banned and you can get quantity and volume comes so easy too. But like for me, I want to take a lot of um, 
the admin tasks off of my plate so I can focus more on the sourcing part. Because that, at the end of the day, like the, the, the sourcing is the engine of your business, you know, and you need to work on that the most. Now, I've had people come to me saying like they run out of money and like, can I get more money? And I'm like, um, it's not necessarily a good thing to have a lot of money. Like you want to develop your skill set as a buyer first and foremost. Absolutely. Because what might end up happening is you have a lot of money. You're just going to magnify your, your failures. <laughs> That's really bad. Yeah. And so like I've gotten to the point now where like I was really slow and deliberate in my buildup where I was just like, I need to do the proof of concept and understand this thoroughly. Now it's just execution. Now I just need to figure out how to crank the volume and which websites I need to do. And one of the struggles I'm having too is I'm focused, so hyper-focused on Nike. I'm trying to fold in new brands and that's kind of like the, the new thing that I'm working on. And that's where the network is coming into play because they're telling me like, hey, focus on these brands or these categories and these websites. And I think I've spoken with like a hundred sellers in your groups by now. And like, you know, it's so paramount to network and it's just going to drive your business. And I mean, look at what I did. Like 2021, I did 280. 2022, I did 930 in revenue, like four times my revenue almost. That's crazy. Yeah. And you're going to keep growing that super right there. And that's what's yeah. like nice about having like on Instagram, like being on here and stuff. Like it's, it's all free. You like, yes. all of it. like, like you can TM Tony today. You can watch his stuff. You can learn from him. You can learn from my stuff and it's a beautiful thing. And you guys got to take advantage of it. And if you're watching this video, you are, we appreciate you guys. So definitely go yeah. follow Tony on Instagram, startup FBA. Um, this I'm just putting this out there. If you're doing YouTube in the future, look it up, Startup FBA. You haven't, but you might in the future. So I want to plug it in that. Go look that up if you're watching this in the future as uh, as well um, right there. But thanks a lot for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been fun. Sure, cool. All right, thanks everyone for watching. See you See guys. You.